you know about Let me just take a bite of my double chocolate spicy cookie first. Yes, spicy cookies are a thing. Look it up. They're my new favorite thing. If you decide to make them yourself, go light on the spice. Trust me. So, yo, welcome back to Collection Show Off Week. Hot Pocket Zenny here with day three of my collection tour. Here, I'll even do the last time we looked at Figmas and Nendoroids. Now it's time to go over all my scale figures. And don't worry, if you missed the last two vids, they will be posted at the end of the video. And just to recap everyone, throughout the week I am showing off my whole figure collection while giving some fun facts and sharing some general collecting advice. And maybe uh, some hacks along the way with my collection. So let's jump into it Blue's Clues style because this is the biggest part of my collection. <laughs> Squirrel. There's a squirrel outside. There he goes. He's on the fence. Oh, that's just my neighbor. <laughs> that squirrel. So far, scales have been my favorite types of figures to stock my shelves with. At first, I was more into Figmas and Nendos, but uh, lately the scales have been starting to take over. I like the higher details in them. I think they can add more of a aesthetic and appealing look to your display. Some of them even have unique bases and displays. You can even theme them if you want. My biggest majority so far are at the 1 7th scale which is the most common. I do have a few at 1 8th, which are a little bit smaller than 1 7th. No 1 6th so far, or anything bigger. That's gotta wait till I get more room. Let's go ahead and start with the more affordable ones first. Although scales can get pretty pricey, don't let the price always determine the quality of the figure. Prize figures can be just as nice as the higher ones, and are great for anyone just starting out, like the Band Presto line. Might as well start with my very first figure that I ordered online. I'm talking the champ the savior of the world, my mans, Mr. Hercule Satan, from of course Dragon Ball Z. Glad I found this one. I still think this is the best looking figure of him, except I think he's got kind of a lean going on now. I guess that's one thing you gotta look out for is uh, cheaper bases and bad support can cause lean over time. I ain't done with Dragon Ball yet, cause you know I gotta get my first anime crush, Android 18 baby. I'm still mad at that bald bastard for taking my girl. I really wanted one of her in her classic attire, but uh, this one will do. I actually found it at Yumicon a few years ago. This uh, would be her outfit from Super, I believe. I remember it was the last day of the con and my friend and I both wanted uh, figures from the same booth. I actually asked the dealer if he could bundle my friend and I's figure together and kind of like round the number down and give us a discount if I, if I both bought them together. Look at your boy Zenny out here wheeling and dealing. I actually got 10 bucks off our figures. Oh, uh, don't mind the base. I cut it in half because it was taking up way too much space on my shelf. It was like a $13 figure, whatever. You know I just can't have 18 sitting alone by herself. She needs her brother, Android 17. He was a local pickup from a comic book store actually. I did a cool one-handed unboxing of him in one of our old vlogs. Out of all the figures out there, prize figures actually stay at a fair price if you find them from local shops. Most stores that carry nerd merch will have a prize figure or two. Wrapping up with Younger Bulma from Dragon Ball. Huh, this was another Yumicon purchase. I guess I bought more figures at Yumicon than I thought I did. I know I didn't buy any this year though. I actually got her the same time I got my Satsuki Nendroid. Oh, and look, this was recorded before I even made this channel. I guess I subconsciously knew that I'd be reviewing figures in the future. I mentioned this last time, I still have one more Resident Evil figure to show off today, and that would be my girl Jill Valentine from the Resident Evil 3 Remake Collector's Edition. My first and only Collector's Edition so far that I've bought myself. I think she turned out pretty decent for one of those buy the game and get a figure with it deals. Sometimes those can be pretty bad. I would love to see Kotobukiya or Alter or any Japanese manufacturers make some more of the Resident Evil crew. There really hasn't been too much out there. I really need my Boo Ada and not like a $900 one. <laughs> Just like Sword Art Online Season 1, Season 2 also started off I for a little bit then fizzled out. Xeno so, you know, was pretty cool. This was actually my friend's but he gave it to me because he couldn't fit it in his car when he was moving. I actually want to give it to my other friend since he's a bigger fan of Sword Art than me. So anytime you want to stop by and pick her up, let me know. Baby. 
more pers more Persona 5, go figure. It was only a matter of time before Good Smile got into the prize figure game. The pop-up parade line has been killing it lately. I actually wasn't expecting much when I pre-ordered this one. When he originally came up for PO, nothing from the pup line was released yet, so I didn't exactly know what I was getting. After getting held up overseas for over a year and a half because of unforeseen viral circumstances, I finally got my first pop-up parade. And from the surprisingly great quality, it might not be my last. They've had a pretty wide range of figures coming out. They even have a few surprises and they're like, goddamn Space Jam! Come on and slam! If you're looking for a good selection of prize figures, I actually got this Joker from Ninoma. They actually have a great selection of prize figures there. They can be a little behind on figures sometimes, but they are a pretty decent site to order from. I've gotten actually a couple figs from them. Ooh, this fella's trench coat ain't doing so hot. <laughs> I was so happy they did a villain from the show, and I'm talking my boy Dobby from My Hero Academia. I got him the same time I got my boy Eraserhead too, who is my favorite hero from the show. We're both always tired, so uh, I relate. <laughs> More of a Nendoroid in stature, uh, Teddy or Kuma from Persona 4. I actually snagged him used from Solaris Japan. He was supposed to come with Marie, but <laughs> Solaris actually messaged me uh, like a week later saying they found unexpected damage on her and wouldn't ship her to me. Probably meant somebody dropped the box and accidentally stepped on it. Solaris is also another big dealer that sells used figs, and I do like that they let you know if they have a figure you're looking for pre-owned, and will even show comparison prices on the side. Justin Timberlake Bobblehead. Don't ask. Oh, he's a big boy. Let me fix the camera. There we go. Some Gorillas merch for you. My boy 2D, which I believe this design is from the Humans album, which I really didn't like that much. But I actually enjoyed their newest uh, Song Machine album all the way through, actually. Super Plastic does more of the like, vinyl figures, which I'm not super into, so I'm probably not going to get the rest of the gang. I do like his light-up eyes, though, but I think having this lad is enough for my collection. He's too big. <laughs> Remember when the gorillas came to Habo Hotel? I am so happy we got an awesome figure of Makisei Kirisu from Science Gate. Really surprised the company Wave went with a more reserved design this time. Risque figures tend to be their biggest export. This one's really unique because you can swap faceplates almost like a Figma, and her head can even swivel around. Still hoping we get a matching Okabe. This was also my first order from CD Japan. Who knew they sold stuff other than CDs? And I do think they are a little more giving with their bonus points than AmiAmi is, which I like. Not all stores give points for purchases, but it is an incentive to like exclusively shop at their store and rack up points to use as discounts on your goodies. Speaking of bonus bucks, ooh, wait, how much is that? So as you grow as a collector and get more experienced over the years and find more stuff, you'll find styles and themes that you like. And one of my absolute favorite styles is characters in street clothes. And the Radio Ava line is absolutely perfect for me. Look at these guys. Rei Ayanami and Asuka Langley looking absolutely fresh in their modern get-ups. I also appreciate their small sleek bases. Extra shelf space is always nice. These were made by Hobby Max. I believe their quality can be a hit or miss sometimes, but these came out pretty great. Asuka looking a little goofy though, and she had a couple little paint splatters on her leg, but I'm really happy with these designs. They're so awesome. I'm super dumb for waiting so long to pre-order these things. I already know anything Ava sells out like right away. I waited till orders were like completely closed to finally talk myself into getting both of them. Oh man, I had to scrounge through random sites to find them, going through back pages and back pages and back. I got the last Asuka from e -Night Media which I've never heard of and is a US site. I was actually pretty confident I wasn't gonna get her. <laughs> but it's a decent place to get figs here in the US. And Ray I got from Ninema, which I did have to pay a little more than usual, but it was worth it. Just wait uh, for the next pre-order video to see who else I got. Waifu alert! <laughs> well, you definitely got me take now. Zenny likes goth chicks with short choppy hair. Dr. Legs, <clears throat> I mean Tai Takemi from Persona 5. <laughs> what a totally out of left field figure release, even before the rest of the thieves were announced. But I wasn't complaining. I think the complete randomness of a release totally explains my collecting habits. It's really the odd outcast characters that I have an infinity for. I don't need to tell you how much I love P5 by now, but as soon as the Dark Doc made her appearance, it was love at first sight. This was also my first expensive higher end figure that I bought. Money, well worth spent. 
There are some figures out there that you can definitely tell there won't be a lot made of. Maybe it's a unpopular character, not a main character from a show or a video game. So I think it's good to learn as many figure sites as you can and check all of them whenever you have the chance. Because some figures maybe won't even be available on every site. Some are kind of exclusive to a handful of sites and some only appear on one site. It happens more than you think. Which Ami Ami and Good Smile I say have the biggest hold on. Ooh yes, here's another favorite of mine and another style of figure that I totally want to collect. Figures with musical instruments. Surprisingly it took me this long to get a Hatsune Miku figure. But I think I made up for it and did right by getting this one. Konobukiya is killing it with these Bishoujo remixes. <laughs> Excuse me, but have you seen Morrigan? Here's more musical goodness, and like I promised earlier, more Megamine from Konosuba. But this time, she came straight from the future of 1985 and is rocking a sick guitar. I told you I'm into collecting stupid things, and this is probably the stupidest figure that I've bought. This is Ray popping a sick fucking wheelie on her BMX. <laughs> it was so dumb, I had to get it. It also fits my other trend of collecting. Girls on Bicycles. Not the biggest fan base, but you gotta appreciate my tenacity. I put a hit out on my figure collection and someone was selling your used not too shortly after. This was probably actually my quickest and easiest interaction with the seller on there. When you want to buy from a private seller on there, you need to PM them first, since the site isn't technically an auction site like eBay. I usually like to ask if the figure is still up for sale and that I'm interested in purchasing it. Then I give them my address and PayPal info. Some sellers on there actually have their own shop set up so they can bill you, but uh, with some others you'll have to calculate and send them the payment yourself. Of course, always feel free to ask them for help if you're having trouble working PayPal. I know everyone does it differently. More Bike Girls and my exclusive Grail. Miss Amane Suzahoff, also from Steins Gate. Favorite character, favorite anime, and I love riding bikes, which is oddly another big part of my channel. I do want to ask you guys what owning a grail means to you. I see people using that word loosely a lot. I believe not every figure you own can be worthy of being a grail. I believe there has to be some trials or difficulty getting your hands on one. Maybe there's multiple historical servants fighting a holy war for it. Or it's just an old figure that's super hard to get your hands on these days. Or maybe it's a design like this one that's perfectly attuned to your personality. Kind of like how I love bike riding and that's what Suza is doing. She was the first figure that I saw when I like just started getting into collection that I really, really, really wanted. But it was kind of so far out there, out of my realm of, I can't afford that, I can't, I don't know how to find it. For periods of time, there just weren't traces of her on the aftermarket at all. It's probably because she did come out like over 10 years ago now. <laughs> I specifically set money aside for her just in case she came up somewhere. Which she did on Solaris of all places, but the next day I checked, she was gone already. <sighs> but... <laughs> I'm happy to say, almost three years later, she is finally mine. She came from Canada, eh? Another fig that I own that's pretty close to what you would call a grail would be Shima Rin on her scooter from Yudu Camp. Another one that I waited till the very last second to get. I was hesitant on getting her because of how small she was and the price they were asking. But I trusted Alter would do an excellent job like they usually always do. I think Alter has proved their worth over this time. They have been around for a while and they excel on painting their figures, man. Their stuff is a little more pricey than other brands, but you know you're getting a straight banger of a figure from them. This is probably my most highly detailed figure that I own. Look at all the light airbrushing and all the little nooks and crannies. She gets the chef's kiss for sure. Like I said about Grail qualifications, what makes a figure special is almost the feelings that it can invoke. When I look at her, I get a sense of adventure. I love the outdoors and visiting nature, like waterfalls and just cool rural spots. Just like in the show. Okay, every figure that I've shown off so far, I've known the source material. But sometimes you gotta take risks and go with something that just straight up looks cool. Zashiki the Yokai from the game Unmyoji. I'm not sure her whole name, I'm just gonna go with Zashiki because her name and the name of the game go, <laughs> go on for way too long. I heard the game actually isn't too bad for a free-to-play Chinese turn-based RPG. They have some really cool designs for their characters though. Like this one, which fits so perfectly into my collection. Since I love Maneki Neko or Fortune Cats, I'm actually starting to collect them just for fun, and the mascot for my channel is a lucky cat. 
it just made sense to get her. And for all this beautiful mess that she comes with, the price was stupid cheap compared to other figures of this caliber. But for some reason, she was oddly a Ami Ami exclusive, and that might make her a little difficult to find these days. But look at these boys! Ah! <laughs> well, not exactly lucky cats, but another character from a game that I've never heard of. Okoi, the Nekomata from Murumasa. Nekomata are basically deadly, dual-tailed cats that take the form of female humans. I love her calico-colored kimono. That's fun to say. <laughs> and the chubbers hanging out by her feet. She kind of goes with my fortune cat theme. Also, the lamp can light up, which is pretty cool, but sticking batteries in this thing is an obstacle course that I do not ever want to traverse ever again. This one's another altar joint, too. You can even see the flushed colors mixing with the natural light. It's really cool. Don't ever speak to me or my daughter ever again. Here's Selfie from Do Da 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 again, with her big spooky scythe. Which reminds me, I still would love the rest of her friends. I can't believe I don't own anything of Izaya Orihara yet. Because I would say he is my number Ishii top favorite anime character of all time. He's such an asshole, but I love it. <laughs> okay, I actually gotta stop before I really buy one. I do not have room on my shelves. Which actually that topic segues us perfectly into my next figure. Wait, that's how you spell Segway? AKA Retooing. Nope, that's really your name. I hate how some figures don't show their actual base in the prototypes, so you don't really know what you're getting into until they arrive. It wasn't really the case for this one. I was just too dumb to really pay attention. Look how scratched that base is. Look at that. <laughs> you think that's what mine's gonna look like. See, it looks like even the people that made her had a hard time putting her on her base. See, there it is. Just keep in mind how large bases can be at times and try to calculate how much space they can take up on your shelf. Space runs out quick. She's really killer though. It's an original take on Little Red Riding Hood of all things. The big scissors are dope and her overall look is just really cool how she balances up on the chair like that. But she was and still is the hardest figure I've had to assemble yet. Some figures you'll get a few pieces that you need to attach yourself, which is usually just pegging a couple parts together, and some figures actually come perfectly complete out of the box. It just depends on what you get. Another figure of mine that possessed some issues during setup was my mammoth order of Megamine again. This is my last Megamine this time. I don't need any more Megamines after this. I guess people are taking hair dryers to her cape to get the pegs to sink in her shoulders further, but uh, I didn't. It looks good enough to me for now. But those are problems that can happen with figures from time to time. New figure manufacturers can be intimidating to order from because you simply can't look up their other stuff that they've made. So you basically just have to pray that their quality is on par with the draft. Or just wait for other people to buy them and review them. Like me. Thankfully, she is actually just straight up my best looking figure that I own now. Seriously. I can't get over how amazing she looks. The paint detail and the awesome effects just look super brilliant. Actually, I don't even want to display her out in the open. I really think I want to get a case for her. She's just too nice to be out in the open and get dust on her, man. Another little thing people sometimes worry about is natural sunlight, which is usually fine. That's really more of something you gotta worry about if you put them like directly on the window seal or something. They usually will be just fine if they're on your shelves away from the windows. So, to make up for not getting her Nendo, I got a scale of Aoi Inuyama from Yudu Camp instead. <laughs> this one is made by Wing, which is basically a subsidiary of Good Smile. I love the bright pastel colors, almost a dreamy look to her, plus those eyebrows. What about eyebrows? I know they are making the others, but I don't know if I'm gonna get them or not. Maybe if I can find them used later. It's always fun trying to decide if you want to get the whole cast or not. It can be expensive though, which is the main reason which keeps me from doing it. <laughs> Especially if there's a big cast or another season. One of my favorite enemies from Dark Souls 3, the Black Knight. He classifies as almost a higher end prize figure from Ban Presto. Overall, he's just a badass character. The armor is old and beat up, and that great sword though. Sometimes you get lucky and get them before they sell out everywhere for a great price. I've only played number three and that's personally enough for me. It is absolutely one of my favorite games, but after the absolute abuse from Bloodborne and Sekido, I'm good on FromSoft games for a while. And ooh, finally my last scale figure of the year. She came right towards the end of December. That's right, Shawa Miku from, from my ethos, mythos, 
Not this again. I've never owned anything from a Chinese manufacturer yet, and I was pretty interested. I actually think Chinese manufacturers are starting to make their way into the figure game. I don't have many figures with elaborate displays, just mainly normal bases, so I was mostly excited for that. So this one was a Chinese exclusive, so all your normal Japanese retailers could not sell her. Which was strange, because Mythos has been selling stuff in Japanese stores for a while now. Again, it does pay off. Take a deep breath, calm yourself, and just do a little research. Because it seemed like the only way to get her was through a Chinese proxy service, which I'm terrified for all the right reasons to use. Too many middlemen for me. I'd rather get the figure directly from the dealer. And good thing I did do a little digging and found Anime NPC, which is a normal figure site based in Hong Kong. So they actually had the rights to sell her there. I believe you have to pay a separate fee for the proxy. The process just seemed way too much of a hassle for me. But ordering from Anime NPC was super easy. I put down the minimum payment when I first ordered her, and when they told me that they had her in stock at their store, that's when I paid off the rest of it. Collecting ain't easy, but it's necessary. I'm chasing figures like Tom chases Jerry. Oh man. That was a lot to go over, but we did it, everybody. I fully went over all my Nendroids, Figmas, and Scale figures. But we're not done yet. You know what that leaves out? My pre-orders. But first, it's award time! Coolest hair color, Miku. Who would win in a race? Android 17. Sickest tricks, Ray. Coolest coat, Little Red. Who would win in a fighting tournament? Hercule, no question. Messiest hair, Shawa Miku, who I would trust the most to make me a meal. Aoi, best pet. Zashiki, who I wouldn't trust to rescue me in a zombie outbreak. Megamine, she'd blow me up. Now that I have my current collection out of the way, I guess the next thing to do is find out who's moving in next. And I can finally wrap up collection show off week. So join me on the final part this Sunday. We can take a peek at all my pre-orders and I'll wrap up the video with some final thoughts. Much love, everybody. You're the best. I will see you soon. Now I'm going to go listen to the Daytona USA OST.